really is, is Brandon and I together created this, the look of Eric Draven in The Crow, um, obviously informed by the comic first and foremost. Um, and, uh, you know, Brandon, I remember physically Brandon, he got himself down to like zero body fat or whatever the level of body fat is you can, you can achieve before you, you know, before it's dangerous, I think, because you need, we all need some level of fat, you know. <laughs> I have more than necessary, so I'm going to live a long time. Um, but, uh, but I remember at the time Brandon trained himself on a particular diet and physical regime to get himself down to... I mean, he, he was physically a, absolutely extraordinary. I've never seen anything like it on the, on the film. Um, and uh, so that was the beginning. You know, the hair was something that um, we see, you know, we spent a long time. He was, first we had like, a, I remember we had a, a, a hair piece to add length because from the moment, you know, Brandon had short hair when he got the, 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 the role. Um, and to, you know, to grow your hair that the length that it was in the movie took, takes some time you know um, and we didn't have that I think we were like gonna shoot in four months time or something so he was uh, you know we had this hair piece that he was that was added on to him like an extension to make his hair longer which I remember we discarded through the shoot because eventually his hair got to the right length you know um, but then the physicality of the makeup and the and the costume in were, were something that we spent a long time on you know the the, the makeup, the way the makeup is depicted in the comic is very clean. It's very um, kind of, it's like Alice Cooper almost. It's very, uh, you know, it's based on the mask that, you know, comedy and tragedy masks uh, that he has on his uh, on his vanity mirror, the characters on his vanity mirror. Um, but we soon decided, you know, we, the first makeup we did was very clean, very clean lines. And and uh, we, we did some tests with it and we found that through the day, you know, we were trying like rain on his face and all this sort of stuff, just camel test before we started shooting. And we found that as the makeup broke down, it actually looked much, much better, you know. And it's kind of like what they've done now. I mean, that, that's informed what they did with uh, the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker character, um, who is, has very strange, well not strange, but very obvious parallels to Brandon's um, Eric Draven. Um, but the way the makeup is sort of d distressed is kind of part of the, the, the flavour of the character. We found that the more distressed the makeup was, the more expression he, he and, as an actor could put into the character. You know, it's a very odd, it seems like a contradiction, but it actually is, is the case, you know. Um, so that's something that we, uh, that, that was a real kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a eureka moment with that that particular part of his character. Because I was, I was a little bit concerned about the makeup going into the movie. I just felt it could easily become too theatrical and be and seem silly, you know. Um, and so the fact that it was more distressed actually helped that 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 problem. And of course, Brandon himself brought such a depth to the performance that it overcame all that stuff, you know. Um, but then the other uh, specific thing that we had, uh, that we, we discovered through the course of pre-production on the film was the trench coat, the leather trench coat, which has become a, a kind of cliche now in, uh, in, action, in action movies. It's been used in so many other movies since The Crow, I'm pretty sure that, well, I know, I know we invented it in The Crow because I know that we didn't really invent it. That's always the case, isn't it? When you're an originator, you always kind of, you're an originator because you kind of know that you're not an originator, in fact. Um, and uh, Brand, you know, I, I, we, uh, Brand and I started discussing. Uh, I said to him, I wanted, I want something that's like a cape, because uh, I wanted him to have like a, the the sort of silhouette of Batman, right? But not a cape, because obviously that we we were, we were anti-Batman. You know, that's what the crow was, anti-Batman. You know, we were trying to break those superhero conventions. We were trying to make a, a superhero comic book set in a reality, a gritty urban reality, like a 70s movie. Well, I, was, I was actually, that's what was my influence, the sort of 70s Hollywood cinema, you know. Um, and so we, uh, we were trying to work out what to do and Brandon had the idea of like, he said like, how about like a black leather jacket? And I went, yeah, that's kind of okay. but. Then we saw a movie, uh, Carlito's Way, with Al Pacino, where he has this kind of, a, it's like a three-quarter three length 
black trench coat and uh, I mean that's that's pretty cool. That's a cool look. I think we'll borrow that that idea, but we'll make it really long. We'll go down to the ankles, you know. Um, and it gave him that that line, that silhouette, that sort of Batmanish silhouette. And of course, then I realised why um, that that's really a difficult thing to shoot with because uh, the long leather trench coat it gets gets in the way constantly. It's always tripping you up and. It's, for action scenes, it's really a tough thing to to get right, you know. And in, in fact, some of the recent Batman movies, they actually CG the cape. They shoot the film without a cape, um, and they put the cape in later on because they find that it's easy for them to do that because they've got hundreds of million dollars and they don't really care. So, um, but it's uh, that's the sort of evolution of the, the of the look of the character.